the UK's first new nuclear power station in a generation. A $24 billion project, the Hinkley Point plant, will meet 7% of Britain's electricity needs for 60 years and create more than 25,000 jobs. The electricity generated will be reliable and low carbon and so completely compatible with our climate change obligations. And Hinkley Point C will inaugurate a new era of UK nuclear power. But this new era will be funded by foreign investment. Two thirds of the project is being paid for by French state controlled energy firm EDF. And it's been guaranteed around double the market rate to generate electricity for 35 years meaning British consumers could pay subsidies of up to $39 billion. The other third of the plant is being funded by China, with the understanding it could lead future nuclear build projects in the UK. The deal has raised concerns about national security, prompting the government to enforce new safeguards. It says it will be able to stop EDF from selling its controlling stake in Hinkley and will take a special share in all future nuclear projects. But some critics say even with these safeguards, this deal is costly for the UK and the environment. Nuclear power supplies around 20% of Britain's energy. Hinkley Point will be the first reactor built there since the 1990s. In 2015, more than a quarter of the EU's energy came from nuclear power with 128 reactors operating in 14 out of the 28 member countries. The UK has an ambitious target. By 2030, it aims to reduce its carbon emissions by 57% on 1990 levels, tougher than the EU's target of 40%. While nuclear power will help towards this target, it raises concerns about other environmental risks. The UK also has a goal to meet 15% of its energy needs from renewable sources by 2020. Critics of the Hinkley Point deal say it is a short-sighted investment. The UK's own public watchdog says that by 2025, the cost of producing electricity by renewables, such as wind and solar energy, will be the same or lower than nuclear. Is Hinkley Point a good deal for the UK? Or does having foreign companies in charge of this project make it vulnerable? Yvette McCullough, The Newsmakers. Joining me now from London is Tom Burke, chairman of the environmental think tank E3G and a former government advisor on climate change. And Michal Maidan, Asia analyst for the research consultancy Energy Aspects. Thanks so much, both of you, for joining us. Tom Burke, Hinkley Point, what's your biggest problem with it? Oh, it's a very expensive strategic mistake for the country. As your, your uh, package pointed out, it's going to produce electricity f at more than twice the current wholesale price for 35 years. It's going to cost £37 billion in subsidy from British consumers to get it, and all of that for an untried reactor, no example of which is working anywhere in the world. So it's, it's a very bad deal. There are cheaper, faster, uh, cleaner, more reliable ways to meet uh, a low-carbon, affordable, secure electricity supply for the future. So what you're really seeing is a 20th century solution to 21st century problems. Just to be clear, Tom, you're emphasizing cost over security. Um, how big are your security concerns? I'm not very worried about the prospect of taking Chinese money and the way you fit nuclear power stations into your uh, grid doesn't give them access to the kind of software that would expose you to security worries about crashing your grid. Uh, I think the government is right to have taken a, a golden share in order to prevent the, the reactors being sold on. But the security worries aren't really the biggest worries. There are, of course, other anxieties about what happens to the radioactive waste at the end of its life. There is no yet available solution to that problem in the mm -hmm. United Kingdom or indeed really anywhere else in the world. OK, Michal Maidan, this is a very expensive strategic mistake, according to Tom. You disagree. Why? 
I mean, if you look at on the diplomatic level, um, it might have been a strategic mistake when it was first conceived by Osborne and Cameron. For Theresa May now to have cancelled it vis-a-vis -vis the Chinese would have been a huge diplomatic gaffe. Now, in terms of energy considerations, I think there are still uh, sort of we, we still need to see how the pricing pans out. We do still need to see how the technologies on the renewable side pan out. Overall, yes, it looks like the consumers are overpaying right now. We don't know that for sure in 10 years. But on the diplomatic level, it's a completely different story because cancelling the deal at this point in time when the UK needs all its foreign um, partners and potential markets cancelling such a big profile deal with the Chinese would have been seen as a slap in the face and would have taken UK-China relations 10 steps backwards. Yeah, that's interesting, Michal, because Prime Minister Theresa May was having second thoughts, then she said OK. Uh, there's speculation about what happened in that interim. Do you think that the Chinese had threatened her or threatened the British government to say, hey, we're going to go back those 10 years and you're not going to get a sweet deal on anything else? Well, the Chinese made it very clear that they would be very disappointed uh, if the deal were not to go through. I don't think there's much that they can threaten with. I mean, it's the UK opening its borders or not. But for the UK, again, it was a very big symbol. And we have to remember that just ahead of the G20, the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe sent a very concerned letter and issued a very concerned paper about the future of Japanese investments in the UK. So certainly a part of it was to show that the UK is open for business but with some safeguards. And probably there were domestic political calculuses involved here with Theresa May wanting to differentiate herself from Cameron and Osborne. Um, so I think there are a lot of, uh, of factors that came into this decision. Tom Burke, the price you have to pay, $24 billion to uh, have warmer relations with the Chinese? Well, I certainly agree that that was a, a major, looks like having been a major factor in the decision. Uh, in a sense, it was a white elephant that got so big nobody could shoot it. That doesn't make it anything like a good deal. It's just you're basically selling out your energy policy for some marginal gains in the headlines. And the really strategic problem is it begins to point Britain in the wrong direction in terms of the future architecture of its electricity system. We're moving into a world in which the digitization makes available all kinds of uh, uh, strategic and structural change in industry. That's true for the electricity industry as well. And what it means for Britain's electricity consumers is all they'll go on getting for the next 35 years through their uh, letterbox will be a big bill. Actually, the world in which we're moving into for electricity systems is one in which consumers won't only be getting bills through their letterboxes, they'll be getting checks, revenue checks as well. Mm -hmm. Michal, might it be better to invest the money in renewables, as, as some have suggested? Because who knows, by 2025, these stations might almost be a relic of a, of a bygone era. I mean, certainly there are alternatives, including renewables, including natural gas, including interconnecting with other European countries. A review of, of the UK's energy, energy policy uh, would be a good thing. I just think that the timing now, Theresa May inherited this white elephant or this very big deal. It became a hot potato, and there were very few good options for her. But certainly a review of the UK's energy needs and its energy policy would be a good thing for the government. Tom, post Fukushima, there was... A, a taboo related to or connected to nuclear energy. Might a deal like this uh, begin the process of reversing that taboo, reversing those questions that people have been asking about whether nuclear energy is the way to go? I don't think so, actually. I think the... I suspect Hinckley will be a one-off, rather like Sizewell was in a previous British governments when there were big nuclear ambitions. Uh, ten power stations were promised, one was actually built. I think the economics are a real killer for nuclear. If you're worried about safety, what you want to be more concerned about is the Chinese government proposing to build 60 nuclear power stations in the next few years. And I think the idea that you can maintain the necessary level of safety and quality of build in order for those programs to be successful. I think that's a very, very big question mark. Michal, Tom says Hinckley will be a one-off. Uh, we'll be finding out in, in four years if China's plans for an even bigger station in, in Essex, the Bradwell nuclear plant, will be approved. Do you think it will be approved, Michal? 
I think that will face quite a few delays. We'll see if Hinkley Point starts on time. Uh, as Tom said, there are issues with the technology. We haven't really seen it yet. Uh, even financing for EDF could be a problem. And the government has hinted that future deals will not look like this one. So any future reactors, I think, will be a long time in the making. Tom, 25,000 jobs yeah, I, will be created between now and 2025. Aren't you at least a little bit excited about that? I'm not at all excited about it. I'm much more concerned about the 14,000 jobs in energy efficiency that the British government destroyed by an arbitrary uh, change in its policy and the 12,000 jobs in the solar industry that it destroyed by an arbitrary policy. We could have got more than that number of British jobs uh, that would be long life jobs if we continued with those policies and we simply wouldn't have needed Hinkley at all for our secure supplies of affordable electricity. The thing to remember is that the costs of the renewables, the costs of batteries uh, that allow you to deal with their variability, those costs are going down consistently. Nobody's ever built a new program of nuclear power stations where the cost didn't go up over time. OK, good point. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Tom Burke and Michal Maidan, it's been great to talk to both of you. Thank you so much.